Yes, my name is Anuj Jain. I'm a director in the Corporate Strategic Innovation Group, which is part of the strategy office at Cisco. We look at uh, technology trends, disruptions, innovations, and when we identify one of these trends, we try to accelerate and demonstrate the value of the trend. So you can think of fog computing as a, as a decentralized architecture, which brings uh, computing, storage, control closer to the edge of the network from the cloud. And this is becoming extremely important going forward due to the number of things which are getting connected to the network. So without FOC, it becomes very difficult in many circumstances to, to manage these things in an efficient way. Cost efficient, and sometimes we talk about security, and uh, there are many examples where FOC computing solves, uh, this sol solves the problem. I would say a CEO of a company which, which is in the business of things, which produces or manages things, should care because going forward, the number of things which, are, which is always increasing and the way to manage will become a problem. So if the CEO doesn't know the best way to manage these multitude of things, be it robots, be it uh, sensors, uh, he will be limited in the way he can um, uh, sort of sell his overall solution. It is new. Uh, some people may argue that fundamentally the architecture may have been defined a long time ago, but it is new in the sense that we are now trying it out and using it in certain very precise verticals such as uh, oil and gas uh, uh, cities, what we call smart cities, uh, the way we want to manage those cities in a cost-efficient way. We, we are using this architecture. What we realize is um, in the city of Barcelona, they have a, a very good vision about how they want to manage their city in the future, but they have some very clear um, demands or constraints. For example, they want to manage the city uh, through only certain cabinets, not a multitude of cabinets, which include all the infrastructure, which means that you want to manage the city uh, services like energy, traffic management, video, and multitude other services, but you do not want a multitude of boxes around the city. So you need to then find a way, a solution, to be able to have one box inside this cabinet, which we call the fog node, which will enable the management of these services in a very efficient way. That means that not only you will be, man be managing each service separately, but you will be able to share between services when required information. And that's where uh, we think that there is a lot of value. And the city, in fact, is uh, very much interested in our solution. And when we explain the, the, the solution, it's really about eliminate, eliminating silos, uh, increasing efficiency, uh, in certain cases, uh, increasing security, because that will be very important that uh, if you are managing traffic, you, you don't want somebody to be able to hack at a central point the entire city. So you need to separate the cloud and the edge uh, in certain very key control points. The other uh, example which is very, I think, uh, important and popular is autonomous cars. Everybody's talking about them. We still have not passed the, the stage where they are, they've become ubiquitous, but it is coming. Again, fog, fog computing would be a very good example of deploying that in autonomous cars. If you remember, the, the, we said it's a decentralized distributed architecture, so a car would be a perfect example of having one of those, what we call a fog node, where it would have autonomous way of processing, analyzing, uh, different uh, services, mm. but in certain circumstances will communicate to a central uh, uh, repository or a data center. So it's a combination of both these uh, scenarios where you, you, you want the car to, to be able to take decisions very fast, locally, 
And in certain circumstances, you still want it to be connected to a more central place. So that's a very good example of uh, fog uh, computing architecture. Fog is going to use the cloud resources with, with the edge, which will be uh, the sensors. So it's not with or without, it is together. It is absolutely a continuum, and that's very important that we don't want to, to um, segregate that it is fog which is separate than the cloud. It is really part, it's a continuum, and depending on the scenario, you will have a far more cloud-centric uh, solution, and in other scenarios you, where you will have much more requirements uh, for speed, for example, where you will not be able to send all the data to the cloud, you will have a fog uh, scenario. I think it is really important for companies like Cisco to, to see that if we want this to become ubiquitous, it needs to be open. If we want this to be open, we need to have all companies in this field adhering to the same type of architecture. Otherwise, we will go in a siloed approach where a customer will feel that he will only be able to buy a solution end-to-end -end from one supplier, which will restrict him in his choices. So we think that it's very important that the major companies who are providing computing uh, have a common understanding of this architecture so that eventually they will compete, but in a way where each one will propose its best elements. So maybe uh, there's a scenario where there will be a data center with one supplier using a fog architecture with fog nodes from another different uh, supplier, and the sensors at the edge will be still another supplier. In one year, w what I see is the number of companies adhering to this architecture will just increase almost exponentially. That's the way we, we see the, the momentum. And five years from now, I think it will just become a word like cloud is today. It will become ubiquitous. N nobody will be arguing or debating about the architecture. It will just be uh, taken by all the people.